In this lecture, we're going to talk about four important periodic trends. Atomic radius, ionization energy, electronegativity, and electron affinity of atoms. Now, let's begin with the atomic radius. So, what is an atomic radius? Well, it's exactly what you think it is. If you think of our atom as being a sphere, then the radius begins at the center of our nucleus and ends at the outermost electron shell. So, for this atom, our radius is the black line. So I want to ask the question, what happens to our atomic radius as we go from left to right across a period on our periodic table? For example, let's take the following period. Let's begin with lithium and go all the way up to fluorine. What happens to our atomic radius? Well, we see that atomic radius decreases as we go from lithium to fluorine. Why is that? Well, it's because of two things. First, the number of protons, or number of protons found in our nucleus, increases as we go from lithium to fluorine. And second, the number of electrons found on our outermost electron shell also increases. And this means, according to Coulomb's law, the force also increases. In other words, the force with which the protons pull the outermost electrons increases. And this means that our effective nuclear charge on our atom increases. And if the force is stronger, so the protons are pulling our outermost electrons with a greater force, that means our radius will decrease. The distance between the center, the nucleus, and the outermost electron will decrease as we go across the period. So that means our lithium will have the highest radius, the largest radius, and the smallest effective nuclear charge. While our fluorine will have the highest effective nuclear charge and the smallest atomic radius. So now let's talk about a group. What happens as we go from top of the group to the bottom of the group? So let's look at the following group. Let's begin with lithium and go to sodium, then potassium, and so on. <clears throat> well, as we go down the group, our atomic radius tends to increase. And this is because with which atom we add a new energy shell. So let's look at the following two atoms. Let's look at lithium and let's look at sodium. Sodium is right below lithium on the same group, on the periodic table. So notice that we have two energy levels, 1s and 2s for the lithium. While the sodium has not two, but three energy levels, 1s, 2s, and 3s. Now this addition of the 3s means that our atom will grow in size, will enlarge. Where this guy, the outermost guy, is the 3s shell. So that means when we move one down to potassium, potassium will have a 4s. So potassium will be even larger than sodium and definitely larger than lithium. And that's exactly what we see. In other words, as we go down a group, our atomic radius tends to grow in size. While as we go across the period, our atomic radius tends to decrease because our effective nuclear charge of our atom tends to increase. So that's atomic radius. Now let's look at the ionization energy of our atoms. So what is the ionization energy? Well, electrons don't simply come off the atoms by themselves. Remember, electrons are held together by electrostatic force that comes from the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electrons. So something must pull those electrons away. In other words, work or energy must be inputted into our system to pull that electron off. So therefore, we can define our ionization energy to be the energy required to pull off that electron, that outermost electron. Now more than one electron can be pulled off. For example, calcium, calcium in its neutral state can take away two electrons to become calcium plus two. So that means some atoms can pull away or uh, can give off more than one electron. Now the energy required to pull away that first electron is known as the first ionization energy while the energy required to pull away that second electron is known as the second ionization energy, and so on. Now let's look at the following. 
Now, the less likely an atom gives up the electron, the more energy is required to pull that electron off. And we see that as we go across a period, our ionization energy of our atom tends to increase. And to explain that, let's look at Coulomb's law. Now, Coulomb's law once again states that the force is equal to a constant K times charge Q1 times charge Q2 divided, <coughs> divided, <coughs> divided by the distance between them squared, where this guy is the charge due to the nucleus and Q2 is the charge due to the electrons. Now, what happens as we move, for example, from lithium to fluorine? We already said that our effective nuclear charge tends to increase as we go from left to right. So fluorine has the highest force. In other words, the, the protons found in the nucleus pull those electrons on the outermost electron shell with a lot of force, much more force than lithium or beryllium or boron or carbon. And that means it's going to require much more energy to pull those outermost electrons off. And that's exactly why, as we go across a period from lithium to fluorine, our ionization energy tends to increase. Because as we go this way, we have a higher effective nuclear charge, which means we have a greater force. And also, take this into account. As we go across, our atomic radius decreases. And that means our denominator, our R, also increases. So we see that our Qs increase, our R's decrease, and whenever the denominator decreases, that means our force tends to increase. So not only does this increase in charge cause the force to go up, but also the decrease in this, in the, uh, the R, or the atomic radius, it tends to increase our force. So therefore, as we go from left to right, our ionization energy also increases. How bad when we go down a group? Well, when we go down the group, our atomic radius increases. And that means if we go back to Coulomb's law, if our atomic radius increases, that means the distance between Q1 and Q2, or the protons and electrons, increases. So our R also increases. And if our R increases, our denominator is increased. And that means our force is less. So as we go down a group, our ionization energy tends to decrease. So, to wrap up, basically, the higher your ionization energy is, the less likely you are to give up electrons. And we'll see that this directly translates into something called electronegativity. So let's look at the third periodic trend called electronegativity. Now, electronegativity is simply the ability of atoms to accept or attract other electrons. And we see that as we go from left to right across the period from lithium to fluorine, our electronegativity increases. So let's examine why. Let's look at the atomic structure and the electron configuration of lithium and compare it to that of fluorine. Now lithium has three electrons and three protons. So its nucleus is composed of only three protons, while its inner shell is composed of two electrons and its outer shell is composed only of a single electron. Now let's look at the fluorine. Fluorine has nine protons in its nucleus. While two electrons are found in the inner shell, seven electrons are found on the outer shell. And that means because we have a higher nuclear or effective nuclear charge, we have a higher force. In other words, because we have nine protons in our nucleus, and seven electrons on our outer shell, our force with which our nucleus pulls those electrons is much greater than the force with which the, these three protons are pulling the single electron. And so that means if we place some arbitrary electron equidistant between these two atoms, what we see is that this fluorine will pull this electron with much more force than this guy. And that means as we go from lithium to beryllium to boron to chlor to a carbon to nitrogen to oxygen finally to fluorine, our electronegativity increases. And in fact, fluorine is the most electronegative atom. 
and electronegativity is actually measured on a scale called the Pauling scale and it's given a highest value of 4.0. Now, as we go across the period from left to right, we see that our electronegativity increases. How about as we go from top to bottom? Well, as we go from top to bottom, our atomic radius increases, so our force with which our protons in the nucleus pull those electrons decreases because remember, force according to Coulomb's law is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 over R2. So our denominator increases, decreasing our force. And so therefore, as we go from top to bottom, our electronegativity decreases. Now, for noble gases, electronegativity is undefined. And that's because in noble gas structure, the electron configuration is perfect. Ele noble gases can't accept any more electrons. Because notice that this 2p orbital can accept one more electron. And that's exactly why fluorine can accept one more electron. But the next atom, the noble gas after this guy, can't accept any more electrons because it has a 2p6 electron configuration. So let's look at our final periodic trend called electron affinity. Now electron affinity is the amount of energy released when an atom gains an electron. Remember, the only way to take an electron away from the outer shell of an atom is to apply work, is to input energy because work must be done against the force of the protons in the nucleus attracting those electrons, those outer electrons. So that means the reverse must be the following. Whenever an electron, or whenever an atom gains an electron, energy must be released. And that's exactly what happens when fluorine, for example, gains electrons. When fluorine goes from a neutral molecule, gains an electron, to form an anion, it loses energy. The energy level of the outer shell is lower, and therefore this molecule, this anion, is more stable than the neutral counterpart. So this reaction, going this way, is exothermic. Now, um, that means whenever we go from lithium to beryllium to boron and so on, whenever we go from left to right, our electron affinity increases. And that means this guy, this reaction, is more exothermic for fluorine than for lithium. In other words, whenever our fluorine gains electrons, it becomes stable and it loses a lot of energy. On the contrary, whenever this guy gains electrons, the reaction for this guy is endothermic because this guy, the lithium in the neutral state, is more stable than the anion, than lithium minus one. And that's exactly what we mean by electron affinity. Now likewise, as we go from top to bottom on our group, in any group on the period, our electron affinity decreases. And that's because our atomic radius increases as we go from top to bottom. So as we go from top to bottom, we go from exothermic reactions to endothermic reactions.